Hey guys, it's Lauren, and today we're going to look at some basic color correction concepts, and we're gonna sit into the color correction booth for the work we did on Jess's Big Date with Clinton Jones and our cool colorist, Paul Provo. Hi, I'm, I'm Paul Provo. I'm the colorist on uh, the short and on this series. I've been doing color professionally full-time for about 10 years. So we know Paul from Video Game High School Season 3 where he did fantastic work and he was kind enough to let us actually sit in on one of the sessions and record him talking with me and Clint about the color we wanted for Jess's Big Date. So first things first, there are two different things we're going to talk about today, color correction and color grading, and they're actually very different. Color correction, as opposed to color grading, is when you are making every shot balanced, the exposure is good, you have a lot of good information, and the color temperature is right, you're fixing any errors and making sure everything plays out and looks like it was shot in the same space on the same day, same time. So before we did anything, we looked at each scene and made sure we did color correction first. And what about um, color saturation? Is she too warm there, or do you Maybe like that? Bit. Yeah, she, I think this is too warm. Yeah. Too warm and saturated. Mm -hmm. So this first meeting is determining each look for each scene so the colorist can take that basic vision and apply it to the rest of the short. We're pretty close here, yep. and it's just a matter of me fine-tuning and matching. Yeah, I agree, Lauren. What do you think? I like it. Now, choosing a look for your film doesn't happen just in color correction. Me and Clint had talks about this in pre-production early on. We wanted a James Bond feel, Skyfall, the bar scene with Severin and James Bond, which you can kind of see it influence on. So the colors and stuff like that we talked about beforehand, we baked a lot of it into the lighting, and we made a lot of decisions pre-post-production. So even though me and Clint had a very distinct, established look that we had on set, we shot at a very flat color profile. The importance of shooting in a flat color profile is that you get all the visual information that's available to you. So here's a quick before and after. This is the raw image file, and this is the color corrected image file. So you can see in the raw image file that there's a lot of information. It looks very flat, but it allows you to manipulate almost every single part of the image. So raw profile allows you a lot of creativity and flexibility and options in post. Now, if you don't have a camera that shoots in raw, there are a lot of options for you out there. One, you can go into the menu and start changing the contrast settings and sharpness. You wanna bring contrast and sharpness down, or you can download firmware like Technicolor CineStyle or Magic Lantern, but allows the camera you have to shoot at the flattest way possible Paul was using the program DaVinci Resolve Studio, and you can actually get a free version of this DaVinci Resolve on the Blackmagic Studios website. We'll have a link below. But most editing programs have their own color correction tools, and they're pretty good. So we're going to talk about some concepts that will apply to all different kinds of software, so you don't have to have the specific software to follow along. Okay, so let's get started. When you start with color correction, you want to start with your shadows, your highlights, and your mids. And the reason you want to start with these is you want to still keep as much of information as possible. That's the reason you shot in the flat profile. And these are your basic building blocks for a balanced image. So we're going to be demonstrating this in Adobe Premiere because that's the software that we use. Um, so I will go ahead and start on the sliders here. Our screen here, you see all the blacks are kind of grayish. They're kind of muddy. We want to accentuate those a little bit more. That looks a little bit nicer. Um, we want to bring up, let's look at our shadows here. It's a little dark here. Bring up our highlights a little bit. Give us some more contrast. That's looking pretty good. Don't worry about the colors yet. We're just getting the basic balance here. So here's a good baseline. So here's what it looked like before. Here's what it looks like after. So we still have a lot of information here, and this is a good baseline to start from. So you have a good stepping stone to start playing more with color and grading and tone. So after you've gotten all the color correction done and you have a good solid base to start with, that's where color grading comes in. And this is about choosing your color palette and the tone and the feel of your entire film. If you wanna see color palettes from major films, there are some great sources out there that can condense almost all the scenes into one kind of cool bar. Here are some examples that show the overall tone and color palette of the film. So when me, Paul, and Clint got in more into grading, this is when we got to play with mats and vignettes and spot color correction and picking out things in the frame that we thought were interesting or needed to be brought out more. 
So you can see what it's doing. I can keep bringing it in, but it's taking some of the highlights out of there, which mm -hmm. focuses on her face, and also we see a little less of that, which. What if you brought it in more? I like that. Lauren, what do you think? Oh, I like that. Yeah. It's less about correcting things, but more about accentuating and bringing things out to tell your story better. So color correction is not going to magically create a new look for you or solve all your problems. It's just another storytelling tool to get across and enhance what's already there. So you want to start thinking about colors and look before you even start shooting. And then as you get into color correction, there are a lot of things you can do to maximize the flexibility you have in post. So as we said before, you can shoot on a flat color profile that gives you a lot of information. And then when you start color correcting, start your baseline, which is shadows, mids, highlights, and get the right balance and exposure. And then start looking at skin tones and get that nice, even, good, solid look. And then from there, you can start going into color grading and creating the more emotional tone and creative feel of your, your stories. We're gonna go into color grading later on, and we've heard you, you've asked about LUTs, lookup tables, um, preset looks that can do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. We're going to get into that, but for now, take these suggestions on how to create a baseline good image and then start playing color correction and have fun and see what you can do.